So let's start. <clears throat> so today we're going to talk about Certified Kubernetes Administrator Certification. And to begin with, I would like to tell you a little bit about me. So I am Senior DevOps Engineer at SoftSer. I am also a DevOps lecturer and mentor at some private courses. I have overall five years of professional experience. A master's degree in information security and of course I am certified Kubernetes administrator and that's basically the topic of our presentation. Here is our agenda. Uh, uh, I will give you some general details about certification. We will go through curriculum, I'll discuss exam environment, some tips, strategies, I will show you a task example, I will review some of them. Uh, at the end of the presentation, I will share exam preparation resources, which are used for preparation to this exam. And also we invited certification specialist from certification center. So we will have a discussion with her too. Okay, let's start. Uh, so Certified Kubernetes Administrator was created by Linux Foundation and Cloud Native Computing Foundation to help to develop big and strong ecosystem around Kubernetes. This certification is for Kubernetes Administrator, Ops, DevOps, Site Reliability Engineers, and any other IT professionals who work with Kubernetes clusters. Uh, this certification demonstrates your ability to install, configure, and manage production-grade clusters and its workloads. Also, it shows that you have good understanding of key concepts such as security, maintenance, deployments, application lifecycle management, and so on. And also, it shows that you have troubleshooting skills, and in case of any fable, a failure, you will be able to troubleshoot clusters. You might ask why you need to certify and is it truly worth it? So my answer will be definitely yes, it's worth it. Uh, first, it gives you credibility and value in job market. You will gain some industry recognized certificate and that will help you to grow your career. The second, it could help you to set a good baseline for your knowledge in case you don't have experience with Kubernetes at all or if you have very little experience. And also, if you have practical experience with, with Kubernetes, it will, it will be a great opportunity to systematize your knowledge. Uh, I'm sure you will definitely challenge yourself and you will learn new stuff. So it is really worth it. Um, this exam is online and therefore it could be passed from anywhere in the world. It is proctored remotely via screen, audio and video sharing. So that's why you have to microphone and webcam. Also for this exam, you will just need to have Chrome or Chromium installed. At the beginning of the exam, you will be asked to provide your ID card to prove your ident identity. This is practical exam and it consists of 24 uh, performance-based tasks, which you should uh, do from command line. The passing score of this exam is 74% uh, out of 100. Result will be scored automatically and emailed within 24 hours from the time the exam was completed. You will have two hours to complete task. And the great thing is, is that during exam, you will be able to use official documentation in only one tab. Uh, the price of this exam is $300 and you will have one free take and your certificate will be valid for three years. <clears throat> Here is curriculum. 
So 25% goes on cluster architecture. So you will need to be familiar with role-based access control. You need to know how to use KubeADM to install basic cluster. You have to know how to manage highly available Kubernetes cluster, how to perform version upgrade, cluster management, and implement ATCD backup and restore. For this reason, you have to be familiar with ATCD CTL. 15% uh, goes on workloads and scheduling. You will need to know uh, and understand deployments, know how to use config map and secrets, know how to scale, how to update uh, application, how to make them self-healing, and know how to create a YAML manifest to deploy applications. 20 persons go on services and, and networking. You will need to know uh, how <clears throat> networking works on Kubernetes, how connectivity established between pods, understand services and their types, understand how to use ingress controller. 10% goes in storage. Uh, it's for configuration on volume and volume claims. And 30% uh, goes on troubleshooting. That's a lot. And that means troubleshooting not only the cluster, but also its workloads and application failure. <clears throat> the, at, at the exams, uh, uh, you will have six clusters uh, with different network plugins. And that's important. Uh, at each uh, task, each task on exam must be completed on a specific cluster. So make sure you are uh, checking that you are running on correct environment before you're completing a task, because it's very easy to miss them and to complete task on the wrong cluster. In that case, even if you like make task correctly, it won't be scored. So that's important thing. Here is some uh, tips and strategies. There are two big prerequisites for this exam. As it's practical, you need to be, uh, you need to feel comfortable and fluent on the command line. Also, you have to have a solid understanding of containers and Docker. Uh, basically, that's a baseline for Kubernetes. As I already said, it's a practice exam. So in order to pass it, you need to practice a lot. And instead of picking the right answer in multi-choice tests, you will have to apply your skill to solve 24 real world task uh, with Kubernetes. In this regards, ASCA is very familiar to exams provided by Red Hat. And I really like the type of exams because they really show that you have skills uh, on how to manage Kubernetes cluster. Uh, one more important thing is to manage your time. So not all questions will be equal in terms of time and weight. You will see the weight of each task during exam. You can even count uh, how much task you have to complete in order to pass the exam because passing score is 74%. These tasks are independent. You can go back and forward forward and even if you can't finish all the questions it doesn't mean you can pass you don't need a perfect score to pass uh, so i would recommend you at the beginning of the exam to review and evaluate each task and don't take task you are not sure you will complete you can always go back to them in the end of the exam if you have time one more thing uh, I actually already told about it, it's using our official documentation. So as it's allowed to use official Kubernetes documentation during exam, only in one tab, uh, 
it's you don't have to remember everything like by heart it would be good if you know how to use documentation and know where to find any concepts there so official documentation should should be your first source of reference during preparation i highly recommend you to know and understand kubernetes cluster architecture to know how to know each component what its res responsibility and how they connect between each other <clears throat> for this uh, the best way to learn Kubernetes architecture from my side is to try to create Kubernetes cluster from scratch. The easier way it would be uh, to do with Cube ADM, and there are some tasks on exam like to bootstrap a node on cluster, to create a new cluster with Cube ADM, or to upgrade cluster with Cube ADM. And also there is much more complex task is Kubernetes the hard way by Kelsey Hightower. But I highly recommend you to challenge yourself and try to do this task. <clears throat> but uh, take in mind, it's a hard task. So I wouldn't recommend you to do it at the beginning of your preparation because it's really complex and it could kind of demotivate you. So I would recommend to at the maybe end of the year preparation, try to install cluster from scratch. <clears throat> you need to have solid understanding of core concepts. You need to understand what is pod, what is service, what is the difference between replica sets and daemon set, how to manage ingress, how to configure secrets, config maps, and uh, etc also you need to understand uh, all kubernetes architecture and its components here are some task examples which i split it on domains it's to create bootstrap kubernetes cluster using cube adm there are simple tasks like there could be some kubelet not running on node uh, and you can use systemctl to enable or disable the services. There could be more complex is to start failed node on master. It's complex task because you have to troubleshoot, you have to find the reason why it's failed. A very common task is to backup and restore using ATCD. Uh, it is could be done using ATCD CTL, perform cluster up upgrade and troubleshoot failed clusters. <clears throat> A lot of tasks around conce uh, core concepts. It's like how many pods or deployment exist in system. You have to check it, check it and write to a file. A lot of tasks are on creating pods, deployments, volume with like given attributes. Uh, as also, you need to know how to uh, configure storage and monitor logs. There is small mistake in my presentation. Sorry for that. <clears throat> Some task uh, goes on scheduling. It's similar to how many nodes exist on system. So you need to know how to explore cluster. Is there any taints or tolerations on nodes? There are tasks to taint nodes, set labels or selectors, and configure Kubernetes scheduler. Task on application lifecycle management is specified deployment state, strategy, upgrade or scale deployment, configure pods to be running on each node on a cluster, configure secrets, config map. You need to know how to work with init containers and how to scale or auto scale pods. And the last uh, domain is networking security. I, for example, had task to deploy a network solution. Uh, a lot of tasks are on configuring services, uh, setting proper type to servers. Uh, you need to understand how DNS works. Uh, I also had task on how to resolve pod by its DNS. 
and you need to be able to configure all base access control. Um, there are some great tips which I used during certification. It's um, you will have to create a lot of templates and it could be difficult to edit and create them using CLI. And basically you can generate these templates using kubectl run command. You can specify a dry run flag and redirect the output to a file. And that really saves a lot of time and make things more, much more simpler. Also, you can use imperative commands. Using imperative commands, you can create Kubernetes objects in seconds. For example, you can create uh, update pod services, you can state deployment, even edit uh, deployments using imperative commands. In case if like the result of your task should be a YAML template as a deployment, you can also generate it from existing deployment using kubectl. There is also one great advanced feature uh, in kubectl, it's usage of JSON path. Uh, why basically you might need to use JSON path? You could use JSON pass for like really large data sets. Imagine you have like one, one hundreds or more nodes and there are like thousands of pod services deployments running. And it could be like really hard to figure out what is running on the cluster to get some information. And using JSON pass, you can actually filter the output. And one of the tasks there are around using JSON pass uh, uh, in kubectl. So I highly recommend you to learn how to use this tool. And it's really handy in case if you have like really large scale clusters. You can use JSON pass for sorting some uh, Kubernetes objects based on some metadata and that's really, really handy and useful for a large scale data set. <clears throat> 30% on exam goes on cluster troubleshooting and workload troubleshooting. So there are some tips how to check uh, take information how to troubleshoot your cluster. So there are a few possible ways how cluster components could be deployed. It could be a simple service. So if it's deployed as a simple service, you can get information like using uh, PS utility. Uh, then you can check uh, system D configuration service files. Uh, I had a task to troubleshoot, for example, I had task to troubleshoot some failed node and the reason of failed node was incorrect. This uh, the, uh, was this service file, it was incorrect and I had to update it and then start node. Also, uh, Kubernetes uh, services could be deployed as containers, as a pods in cluster. So you could use YAML files. They are usually uh, are placed in one place. It's uh, at Kubernetes manifest and you can check there also. Uh, one more task I had is that Kubernetes wasn't like API server wasn't responding and I couldn't use kubectl at all. For that reason, you should be familiar how to use Docker utility. Uh, here are exam preparation resources that I used for uh, uh, for preparation to this certification. So the first one, it was Certified Kubernetes Administrator with Practice Test. It's a really good course because it has practice test and you can do it on browser. And a lot of these practice tests are very similar to that that I have on exam. Of course, as I said, you should use 
uh, Kubernetes official documentation, and it should be your first reference in case if you don't know some concepts. There is a great tool, it's called Game of Pods. Here you can practice, uh, you can test some practice tasks on Kubernetes. There is, I attached a guide for installing Kubernetes cluster from scratch. It's a guy from Kelsey Hightower. You can use Kubernetes community blog. Uh, there is a Medium article about most common kubectl commands because in order to pass this certification, you have to master kubectl. And there is Slack channel. Uh, in this Slack channel, you can basically ask any question you want to know about certification. And in Software Confluence, we have a page on how to register for these exams and with some certification details. So that's basically the resources I used for preparation and it was more than enough. Uh, also, we invited our uh, certification center specialist for this presentation is Katarina and uh, I'll be happy to invite her to yeah, I'm, I'm here already. Thank you, Irina, for introduction. Hi, guys. My name is Katarina. I'm from certification center from Kharkiv uh, department. Uh, I don't know whether you know or not, we have three certification centers in SoftServe. Uh, one of these is in Lviv, another in Kharkiv and in Dnipro city. Maybe some of you uh, had visited our centers. Uh, so I will uh, try to uh, get acquainted you with uh, the main procedure in SoftServe if you would like to take this certification. Uh, but first of all, I want uh, to start with core sources uh, to get ready for this particular exam. Um, so the main sources are handbook. Uh, we recommend to visit uh, Linux Foundation page and find this uh, handbook. Uh, also there you will find exam tips and curriculum overview. Uh, also, we think that it is very important to, to read a frequently asked questions before taking the exam, uh, because uh, every quarter uh, exam uh, has its updates, uh, so you need to check all the up-to-date information in the frequently asked questions section. Also, I think it's very important for you to know that uh, once you are registered for this certification, uh, the certification uh, agreement is entered between you and uh, Linux Foundation. So that's always this slide. Maybe we can switch to another one. Okay, thank you. Uh, we as a certification center prepared uh, a list of preparation materials for you. Some of them Irina has just mentioned, some of them not. So you can see uh, the sources, uh, such sources as uh, Linux Foundation, Cloud Guru, uh, Plural Site, Udemy, Cloud Academy, uh, and so many others. And I would like to mention that all uh, these sources and links for these sources will be sent uh, to you in the follow-up letter after this presentation. So you as a soft server, you decided, you finally decided uh, to take this certification exam. What you need to do? Uh, first of all, uh, you need to go to UPM and uh, uh, together you should clarify who will pay uh, for this certification. Uh, would uh, the exam price will be covered for, uh, from the project budget uh, or you will pay it by yourself or uh, as a possible variant, uh, the certification price can be uh, covered partially from the project budget and partially from your own expenses. So you need to decide uh, this information to know this from your project manager. Uh, 
uh, once you decided who will pay for your certification, uh, you uh, need to go to Cornerstone LMS and just to request uh, this certification in Cornerstone. Uh, put the name of uh, your exam in the search tab uh, and uh, we uh, as a certification center specialist, we see your request. And after we get your request, we contact you and uh, sending you uh, all the information, uh, all the information about the registration procedure, what you need to do for taking this particular exam. After passing uh, the exam, it's very important, uh, guys, that you attach your certificate uh, to attach and upload your certificate to Cornerstone LMS. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether you know, uh, earlier we asked you to attach it to Workday. Now you don't need to attach it to Workday. It will be automat automatically uploaded to your uh, Workday profile after uh, you will upload it uh, to Cornerstone LMS. Another slide. Yes, I want to share the information that, uh, that we uh, have just updated uh, the information about uh, this exam on our conference page. Uh, so we also will send you this link to our conference page. Uh, on this page, you will find uh, all the necessary information about registration procedure, about scheduling of this exam, about uh, tips and tricks. So everything you need to take on this particular exam. <laughs> Uh, although this uh, certification can be passed online only, and unfortunately you can go to our beautiful certification centers and pass it here, we uh, as a specialists of certification center, we are always ready to help you with all the questions regarding the registration and scheduling procedure. We are ready to help you with preparation materials. We will tell you what to expect on the testing days, exam tips, uh, how to refund uh, your exam. And we also will, he will help you to attach the certificate to Cornerstone LMS. And uh, uh, this slide is uh, the last one. My part <coughs> is over here and you can ask questions if you would like to. Um, I, I have a few updates. So I, I recently had this certification. Um, it was yesterday to be precise. Um, so I, I have like a few fresh updates. So current right now, the passing score is 66%, not 74. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the pricing may be reduced. I just searched for like coupon in Google and like get uh, $225 for exam. So it can be easily done. And uh, in terms of preparation, the very useful thing um, uh, currently, I don't know like how long it will be available, but currently if you purchase exam, you have uh, two simulation sessions bundled to your exam. So you, you should not like um, have your exam booked, but uh, it, it can be done later, but uh, you have access to this uh, certification simulations. Uh, these are from Killer SH and uh, they're like uh, much harder than the actual exam. So if you feel okay there, then you should be confident that you will pass the exam. Um, as you know, those things can be purchased uh, additionally, but uh, since they came with uh, the certification itself, it's, it is like very useful tool to verify your knowledge or to get some additional knowledge. And uh, in terms of exam itself, um, uh, I can recommend you to create bookmarks for to the doc documentation before the exam uh, so you can spend less time uh, on like searching and you can just like select the the required thing like different resources or like useful commands or something like that yeah thank you Oxy, for your uh, like additions 
the time I passed the exam, it was 74%, but now it's even easier if it's 66. And I heard about exam simulators such as Killer Assage, but I haven't used it. And for that reason, I don't include it in presentation, but it's like definitely great thing. In the preparation course, I attached this practice test. There are uh, mock exams also, and you can also kind of test yourself before exam. Um, yeah, so that's it. And also regarding documentation, so make sure you are, uh, so you can actually open only in one tab this uh, documentation. Yeah, and I, I, I have I have question regarding to that. Do they really monitor that? What if I, uh, uh, by accident or uh, habitually <laughs> open something in a new tab because I always do, do it like that? Is it considered cheating and I failed instantly or what's up to uh, that? So you won't fail instantly and if it's really by mistake, uh, you can explain it to a proctor. There will be a person who will be proctoring your exam via screen, audio, and video sharing. By they are like checking you. Uh, so be careful, but you know you won't like fail it instantly. But I highly recommend to be careful. And also in the official documentation, there are links to external sources. And even if it's in the official documentation, you are not allowed to use external sources. So also be very, very careful. And I have not remember if I said that, but during exam, you have to be in empty room without anybody. And your table also should be able to empty. There shouldn't be any devices, any like nodes, anything on the table. Are we talking about certification in uh, some private uh, room or we are talking about some certification center? It's about it's in some private room because the certification can be taken from anywhere, but you have to meet some requirements. Like the walls should be clean, there should be anything on the walls. Um, can confirm I, I was forced to remove all the pictures from the wall because I took it on in the kitchen and I had like a few just pictures hanging on the wall and Proctor asked me to take them off. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe it's a dumb question, but uh, is there some certification centers where this test can be done or you should do it only in private room? As, as we mentioned before, unfortunately, you can't take it in the certification center. It can be taken online only. No, sorry, I missed it. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Are you allowed to have, to, to have more than one monitor on exam? Um, Actually, I don't know about um, this. I, I can answer because <laughs> uh, so I, I just I have it on my laptop, but uh, uh, Proctor told me that uh, you can have multiple monitors set up. You just have to share it, share, share all, all the monitors to the Proctor. And it looks like there should be no issues if you have like multiple monitors. So he asked me how, how many monitors do I have? And if I have more than one, he just asked me to share all of them. That's it. Okay, thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> also, I attached a Slack channel for this certification and you can ask anytime any question you have regarding this certification. Also, if you will have any other questions in the future, feel free to contact me via Teams. I almost always available here. Yeah. 